Did you know that there's a literal nerve that connects your gut to your brain? Not only that, but there's a whole complex biodirectional pathway that involves multiple systems called the gut-brain axis. In this video, we're diving into the world of the gut-brain connection, exploring how our gut health impacts everything from our mood to our digestion and overall well-being. We'll also uncover how eating and exercise habits can influence your microbiome and vagus nerve. If you're curious about this incredible connection between your gut and your brain, join me on a journey to discovery. But first, hello internet friends. Welcome to my channel. I'm Michiwi and I'm on a weight loss journey. And welcome to Wellness Wednesday, a segment where I share the latest nutritional insights I've been exploring and attempt to translate them back to you. As just your random person on the internet with no formal credentials whatsoever and just Google as my guide. Have I piqued your interest? Perfect, let's get into it. So as I was scrolling through articles before bed, as one does, this article popped up on my feed. Scientists looking to tackle our ongoing obesity crisis have made an important discovery. And well now, yes, obviously I'm hooked because at first glance, it looked like every other clickbait title I've read. Cheerios cause cancer, your favorite snack is linked to diabetes, is your tap water secretly poisoning you? Uh, heads up, two of those are real. Comment below if you can guess which ones. And to very quickly summarize, this article is about how intermittent calorie restrictions affects both the gut and the brain. Honestly, I didn't even read the full article. It was the idea that there is a direct link from your stomach to your brain that I've never even bothered to consider before that made me want to dig deeper. And dug deep I did. So to make this easier, I've broken it up into sections and this video will be chaptered out for those who want to skip around. I will also be linking resources in the description box below. We're going to be going over five sections, the gut-brain axis. We'll define this connection and how our gut and brain communicate. Key mechanisms. This will be about the role of the vagus nerve, the importance of neurotransmitters and hormones, the influence of gut microbiota, and the interaction between our immune system and brain function. Yep, this is a lot. I'll do my best to keep it simple. Influences on our lives. This will be about understanding how the gut-brain connection impacts appetite, mood, emotions, and our response to stress. Enhancing gut health. I'll share practical strategies for enhancing gut health through diet, lifestyle changes, and possibly probiotics. Probiotic supplements. I'll be digging deeper into the incorporation of probiotic supplements, along with potential effects and considerations. Okay, so before I can define the gut-brain axis, I need to define something else first. Neuroendocrine pathways. This refers to the complex communication between the nervous system and the hormone system. The hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis, and the sympathetic nervous system are all examples of the neuroendocrine pathways. These pathways are responsible for regulating metabolism, growth, reproduction, stress response, and many other physiological processes. The gut-brain access is a subset of the neuroendocrine pathways and refers specifically to the biodirectional communication between the gastrointestinal tract, the gut, and the brain. This access encompasses various signaling mechanisms, including neural, hormonal, and immune pathways, and is involved in not only regulating gastrointestinal functions, but also aspects of mood, cognition, and behavior. So you guys can understand why we're only going over the gut-brain access today, right? Having defined the gut-brain axis, we can now delve into key mechanisms. From the complex interconnections of neurotransmitters and hormones, to the influence of our gut microbiota. These mechanisms orchestrate the communication between our gut and brain. The central nervous system. This includes the brain and spinal cord, which serve as a command center for the entire nervous system. These structures receive signals from various parts of the body, including the gut, and send out instructions in response. The enteric nervous system, ENS, often called the second brain. The ENS consists of a mesh-like system of neurons that relays information about gut function, nutrient status, 
and emotional state to the central nervous system. Although the ENS can operate independently, it is also influenced by signals from the central nervous system. The vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is part of the peripheral nervous system, PNS, and serves as a major conduit for communication between the CNS and the ENS. It is one of the main nerves in your body that connects the brain to important organs in your body, like your heart, your lungs, and stomach. And it plays a key role in letting your brain know how things are going in your body and influencing your mood, stress levels, and appetite. Neurotransmitters and hormones. The gut produces a variety of chemical messengers through neurotransmitters and hormones that can affect brain function. For instance, serotonin, a neurotransmitter known for mood regulation, is primarily produced in the gut. Additionally, hormones such as ghrelin and liptin influence appetite and satiety signals that are transmitted to the brain. Microbiota gut-brain axis. The microbiota gut-brain axis is a fascinating and relatively new area of research that explores the intricate communication between the microorganisms that inhabit our gut and our brains. These microbes, which are primarily bacteria, play essential roles in digestion, metabolism, immune function, and protection against pathogens. And interestingly enough, the composition and activity of the microbiota can be influenced by factors such as diet, antibiotics, stress, and lifestyle. If you can't tell, this section right here is what I am really excited to talk about. I think it's not only because it's about a symbiotic relationship, which is always just intriguing, but it's also something that helps me feel more in control about all of this. And last but not least, immune pathways. The gut-associated lymphoid tissue plays a critical role in the immune system, interacting closely with microbes in the gut. Gut microbes help educate and train immune cells to distinguish between harmful pathogens and harmless antigens. This process is essential for maintaining immune homeostasis and preventing inappropriate immune responses. Disruption of the gut microbiota can influence systemic inflammation, which can impact brain health and function. From the regulation of our appetite to the delicate balance of our emotions, the influence of the gut-brain access extends far beyond mere digestion. Exploring how these connections influence everything from our mood to our response to stress helps us get a deeper understanding of the cycle of our eating habits. Again, I'm gonna break this down into different sections. Appetite regulation, mood and emotions, response to stress, and personally my favorite thing to do, emotional eating. All right, appetite regulation. Gut hormones such as ghrelin, known as the hunger hormone, and peptide YY, which acts in opposition of it, send signals to the brain, influencing feelings of hunger and fullness, regulating appetite and energy balance. Gut microbes also produce metabolites that affect appetite regulation by influencing hormone secretion and gut-brain signaling pathways. So as someone who struggles with their mood and emotions, I want to approach this topic with care. I want to preface this by saying that I don't believe taking probiotics is the cure for depression. However, I do think it's important to delve into scientific discussions surrounding health and well-being. That being said, there is evidence suggesting that gut microbiomes can produce neurotransmitters like serotonin and gamma Burochic acid, that thing. Burotric acid, I can't say it, I've tried six times. GABA, it's GABA. Which are involved in mood regulation and emotional responses. The extent of their contribution to overall neurotransmitter levels and their specific effects on mood and emotions are still being researched. And while there have been animal studies, human studies, and clinical trials, that all seemed promising. The only study that I found solid enough to share with you guys are the brain imaging studies, which have revealed that gut brain signaling can influence brain regions involved in mood regulation and emotional processing. For example, changes in the gut microbiota composition have been associated with alterations in activity within the amygdala, the brain region involved in emotional responses, and the prefrontal cortex 
which is involved in decision making and emotional regulation. Response to stress. The gut brain axis is closely involved in the body's response to stress. Stress triggers the release of hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline from the adrenal glands, which can impact gut function and microbial balance. Cortisol, for example, can affect the activity and growth of some gut bacteria, leading to dysbiosis. Dysbiosis can alter neural signaling along the vagus nerve and other neural pathways, affecting brain regions involved in stress response and emotional regulation. Additionally, stress hormones can directly affect the permeability of the intestinal barrier, allowing microbial byproducts and toxins to enter the bloodstream and interact with the immune system and the brain. Emotional eating. Emotional states can influence food choices and eating behaviors through the gut-brain axis. During periods of stress, the body releases hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, which can increase appetite and cravings for calorie-dense foods. Stress-induced changes in the gut microbiota can impact microbial signaling, potentially impacting food preferences and food cravings. Emotional eating can lead to a cycle of overeating or unhealthy eating habits, which can further impact mood and emotions, creating a feedback loop between gut-brain communication and eating behavior. Enhancing gut health. Improving gut health can positively influence digestion, immune function, mood, and even cognitive function. Here are some ways to improve gut health. Dietary changes. Increase fiber intake. Okay, so I think here's a good point to go off into a subsection of a subsection. Prebiotics. Fiber is one of the main sources for prebiotics. And prebiotics serve as a food for probiotic bacteria. Prebiotics can enhance the survival and activity of probiotic bacteria. And when consumed together, they can have synergistic effects on your gut health. Uh, but it's important to note, fiber does not contain any probiotics in itself. It does promote regular bowel movements, which is good for the gut as well. Eat fermented foods. Incorporate fermented foods into your diet, such as yogurt, kefir, kimchi, sauerkraut, tempa, miso, kombucha, and pickles that were fermented in brine. These foods contain probiotics, which are beneficial bacteria, which can help restore the balance of gut microbiota. And another side note, with yogurt, look for ones labeled with live and active cultures, as these contain beneficial bacteria such as lactobacillus and bifidobacterium strains. Limit processed foods. Minimize the consumption of processed foods and sugary snacks, as these can negatively impact gut health and increase inflammation. Stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water throughout the day to support optimal digestion and bowel function. Manage stress. Yep, easier said than done. But as we have discussed, chronic stress can disrupt the gut-brain access and negatively impact gut health pretty severely. And I would say practicing stress reduction techniques such as meditation, deep breathing exercises, yoga, or spending time in nature is just good advice. Get adequate sleep. Prioritize getting enough sleep each night, as insufficient sleep can affect gut microbiota and contribute to digestive issues. Exercise regularly. Engage in regular physical activity. Exercise has been shown to positively impact gut microbiota diversity and promote overall gut health. Limit antibiotic use, which Really, this should just be use antibiotics as prescribed. Actually, we can cross that out. Use them as prescribed. So antibiotics are necessary to treat bacterial infections, but overuse or misuse can disrupt the gut microbiota. So only take them as prescribed. Avoid excess drinking and tobacco use. Smoking and alcohol can negatively impact gut microbiota. They also negatively affect gut health and contribute to digestive issues. 
And all I can say on that is no comment. Do as I say, not as I do. Consider probiotic supplements. If you're not able to consume enough probiotic rich foods, you may consider taking a probiotic supplement. However, it's important to choose a high quality supplement with strains that have been shown to be beneficial to gut health. And I personally would ask your doctor before you decide to do so, if you're able to, which leads me to consult a healthcare professional. If you are experiencing consistent digestive issues or other symptoms related to gut health, consult with a healthcare professional. They can provide personalized recommendations and may recommend further evaluation or treatment if necessary. Uh, yep, we're gonna have to break this into sections again. So first, recommended dosage, then benefits, potential risks and side effects, differences in strains, and lastly, where else you might find them. All right, so dosage. How much should you be taking? Yeah, I can't tell you that. So the recommended dosage of probiotic supplements can vary depending on the specific product, strain, and intended use. In general, starting with a lower dosage and gradually increasing it over time is recommended to minimize potential side effects. However, without specific guidance from a healthcare professional, it's challenging to provide a one-size-fits-all recommendation. As a general guideline, following the dosage instructions provided on the product label or consulting reputable sources on dosage based on the intended use can be helpful. I am none of those things, so let's move on. Benefits. Improved gut health. Probiotics contain live beneficial bacteria that can help restore and maintain a healthy balance of gut microbiota. This can lead to improved digestion, reduced gastrointestinal symptoms, such as bloating and gas, and overall better gut health. Enhanced immune function. Some strains of probiotics have been shown to support immune function by stimulating the production of immune cells and enhancing the body's ability to fight off pathogens. Taking probiotic supplements may help reduce the risk of certain infections and support immune system function. Relief from digestive disorders. Probiotic supplements have been studied for their potential to alleviate symptoms of digestive orders such as irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, and antibiotic-associated diarrhea. Certain probiotic strains may help reduce inflammation in the gut and improve symptoms in individuals with these conditions. Support for women's health. Probiotics may benefit women's health by helping to maintain a healthy vaginal microbiota and reducing the risk of vaginal infections, such as bacterial vaginosis and yeast infections. Some studies suggest that specific probiotic strains may also reduce the risk of UTIs. While probiotics are generally safe for most people, there can be potential risks and side effects, particularly in certain populations or when used incorrectly. Here are some considerations regarding potential harmful effects of probiotic supplements and recommended usage. Risk of infection. In rare cases, probiotic supplements have been associated with infections, particularly in individuals with weakened immune systems or underlying health conditions. The risk is higher with certain probiotic strains, such as those belonging to the genus Lactobacillus or Bifidobacterium. And why those two, do you ask? <sighs> why did I do this to myself? Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium are the most widely used in probiotic supplements and fermented foods. Due to their popularity, there is a higher likelihood of encountering adverse effects or infections associated with these strains, simply because they are commonly used. Also within these two, there is specific species and strain variation. While most strains are considered safe, certain strains may have characteristics that increase the risk of infection, such as higher levels of antibiotic resilience, or the ability to adhere to and colonize the gastrointestinal tract more effectively. Digestive symptoms. Some individuals may experience mild digestive symptoms such as bloating, gas, or diarrhea when starting probiotic supplementation. 
or when taking high doses. These symptoms are usually temporary and usually subside as the body adjusts to the probiotics. Starting with a lower dosage and gradually increasing can help minimize these effects. Potential interactions. Probiotic supplements may interact with certain medications or medical conditions. For example, probiotics containing live bacteria could potentially interact with immunosuppressive drugs. It's important to consult with a healthcare professional before starting probiotic supplements, especially if you are taking medication or have underlying conditions. Allergic reactions. In rare cases, individuals may experience allergic reactions to ingredients in probiotic supplements, such as dairy or other allergens. It's essential to read the product label carefully and choose supplements that are free from allergens if you have allergies, known allergies. Some of us don't know. Overgrowth of harmful bacteria. In some cases, probiotic supplementation may lead to overgrowth of harmful bacteria in the gut, particularly if the probiotics are not well regulated or if there is an imbalance in the gut microbiota. This is more likely to occur with high doses or prolonged use. Differences in strains. It's essential to note that the best probiotic strain for you may vary depending on your specific health needs and conditions. Additionally, probiotics often contain a combination of strains to provide a broader spectrum of benefits. Uh, there's also hundreds of probiotic strains, so I'm not going to go over all of them, but here are some commonly studied strains along with their functions and potential benefits. Lactobacillus acidophilus. Acidophilus. Um, that's what I'm going with. There's words. I'm going to put words. Okay. For the function, helps maintain the balance of beneficial bacteria in the gut. Benefits, supports digestion, boosts the immune system, and may help alleviate symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome and lactose intolerance. Use in supplements, often include in probiotic supplements for general gut health and immune support. Bifidobacterium lactis. I think I did pretty good there. Function, plays a key role in breaking down lactose, the sugar found in milk, and supporting immune function. Benefits, helps maintain digestive health, support the immune system, and may improve symptoms of diarrhea, constipation, and allergies. Use in supplements, commonly included in probiotic formulas for digestive health and immune support. Lactobacillus rhamnosus helps maintain a healthy balance of gut bacteria and supports immune function. Benefits may help alleviate symptoms of diarrhea, constipation, irritable bowel syndrome, and urinary tract infections. Also studied for its potential to reduce the risk of respiratory infections in children. Use in supplements, widely used in probiotic supplements for digestive health and immune support. Bifidobacterium bifidum helps maintain gut barrier integrity and supports immune function. Benefits, supports digestive health, reduces inflammation in the gut, and may improve symptoms of diarrhea, constipation, and allergies. Use in supplements, included in probiotic formulations for gut health and immune support, particularly for infants and young children. Saccharomyces boulardii, a type of yeast probiotic that helps maintain the balance of gut flora and supports immune function. Benefits, helps prevent and treat diarrhea, including antibiotic associated diarrhea and traveler's diarrhea. Also studied for its potential to alleviate symptoms of inflammatory bowel disease and irritable bowel syndrome. Okay, so where are some places that you might find probiotics that you weren't expecting them? So they are sometimes found in multivitamins. However, probiotic supplements are found less in men's vitamins, and I think that's just overall due to the fact that uh, some strains may help support a healthy vaginal biome, but they do exist in some. And to be honest, I didn't really find any for men. So we'll go over the ones for women. Garden of Life Women's Multivitamin with Probiotics. I'm just gonna read this, you guys, this is hard. Okay. New chapter, Everyday Woman's One Daily Multivitamin with Probiotics. I mean, I can't say all that at once, can I? Renew Life Women's Complete Probiotic Multivitamin. Smarty Pants Women's Complete Probiotic Gummies. Ollie 
Ollie's Women's Multivitamin with Probiotics. Mega Food Women's One Daily Multivitamin and Probiotic. Nature's Way Alive Women's Gummy Multivitamin with Probiotics. Uh, you get the picture. There's no hidden in probiotics. If it has it, it will pretty much say it on the label with that. So what I'm seeing though is with protein shakes or protein powders, they don't really mention the probiotics. Uh, but I will give you a list of the ones that I have found that have probiotics with the protein powder that does not say it in the name. It will say it in the product label, but Garden of Life Raw Organic Protein and it includes a probiotic and enzyme blend for digestive support. Ancient Nutrition Bone Broth Protein. It includes a probiotic and enzyme blend for digestive support. Caged Muscle Clean Meal. A probiotic for digestive enzyme and gut health. Amazing Grass Protein Superfood. And it contains a probiotic blend containing, I'm not gonna say it, I'll put it here. So read the product labels. You may not know that you're taking a probiotic if you're taking a if you're taking protein powder and you don't want to do a probiotic. I personally don't. I want to know what I'm putting in my body to do my gut microbiome. Okay, that's a tangent. See how much that is gonna work for me. So there you have it. A lot to digest. Uh, so let's do a TLDR. The gut-brain axis connects our diet, stress levels and physical activity to our overall well-being. Grasping how these factors interact with each other helps us get a bigger picture of the complexities behind emotional eating or why stress might leave us with a knot in our stomach. And it encourages us to make healthier choices. It's clear that transforming our gut microbiome isn't a magic pill for depression. However, becoming more mindful about why we might choose certain foods or deciding to take that extra walk can have profound effects on our health journey. This awareness has personally reshaped my relationship with food. I used to obsessively count calories and I felt miserable about myself for needing to eat. Uh, then I swung to the other extreme, viewing eating as merely a result of hunger and any tasty thing would do. And I am done swinging from one extreme to the other. It is about finding that middle ground a delicate balance that I am trying to maintain. Learning about the impact of food is not just a quest for balance, it is vital for survival. Eating is literally a necessity for life and it is astonishing how little focus there is on nutrition in our society. Uh, but that's a discussion for another time, although it does genuinely piss me off. Like imagine how better our bodies would function, how much healthier our society could feel if only the importance of nutritious foods were emphasized in schools, if healthier options were accessible and affordable, and understanding that there is a legitimate reason why there is an obesity epidemic. Anyway, that's a topic I might delve into at another time. Let me know in the comments if that's what you wanna hear. For now, let's focus on the balance that each of us can strive for on our day-to-day -day lives. As we wrap up, remember, every bite you take, every step you move, contributes to a dialogue between your gut and your brain. It's a conversation worth paying attention to for the sake of your health and happiness. It's not about being perfect. It's about being considerate. Thanks for joining me in exploring this fascinating topic. Until next time, keep seeking balance and nourishing both your mind and body. Bye.